Hello everyone and welcome back to Chess Programming with me. So I said that we we're going to be starting Unity today and that is exactly what we we're going to be doing. I um, did make a video introducing on how to download and install Unity so by now you should have uh, Unity up and running. If you still have any problems do feel free to post in the comments down below. So once you're at this stage you can go to new because we want to make a new project. Um, you can name it whatever you want. I will name it Chess Programming for YouTube and save it anywhere you would like. Make sure to press 2D because Chess is a 2D game. You could probably make it 3D however I'm going to be working with 2D. You can put this on or off it doesn't exactly matter what you do with it. Um, but for the sake of this I'm going to keep it off it shouldn't affect anything for you if you keep it on and then you can do create project and you need to wait a bit until it all loads uh, while you're using unity I would recommend having Photoshop or GIMP or something like that GIMP is free so if nothing else do install it it can help you with making some images so I've already actually got this uh, set up slightly and I will open that up in just a moment and I will explain how I got to that stage. Okay so this is what I actually have so far. Uh, in paint, yes in paint I made my own chessboard just black and white simple and then using GIMP I made sure that there is no background i.e. the background is all alpha so that it's transparent. Then I went on to non-copyrighted images and found myself some black bishops, some all of the pieces for chess that you need and I also downloaded them. Now how I actually got them onto here was uh, by doing right click and then import new asset and you can import whatever you want. So for example if I go into my assets which are already here you can uh, do it like this so you can go into a folder which has images or what you can do is go into the asset folder manually and drag and drop uh, whatever assets you want by assets it can be videos it can be images it can be sound files depending on how you use them uh, you have to uh, configure them differently and as you can see on the right hand side over here you've got different configurations for them how you get them, oh, I have no idea what I did there, but it doesn't exactly matter for now, I can sort it out later. How you get them onto the scene, so this over here is the scene and this is what it would actually look like if you were to play the game in reality. So you wouldn't be seeing it as it is on the grey place, you would be seeing it as it is over here with the blue background. So first of all, most important thing probably is the main camera you have these selections over here so the main camera is basically what you see the selection of what you see I've shrunk it down kind of and you can make it as big or as small as you want I made it so that it just fits the board by default it has the sides top and bottom it doesn't matter because we will want to use those for like score and uh, things like that so we do want those there for now then how you actually add the elements such as the board onto there is just simply drag and drop. I did uh, enlarge mine so if you want to enlarge and keep the scale you hold shift and then enlarge so as you can see even if I'm going up and down wherever I want it still keeps it uh, in the same aspect ratio. Just a little hint for that. So that's what I did with the board and then I set it up here with the size I wanted it to be. I set it up so that the size is pretty similar to the pieces. Maybe I, I'm going to want to make the pieces slightly larger or the board slightly smaller but I'm not going to worry about that so far as much. Even the board isn't that important because well we want to program the board not just have an image as we want to have a 2D list. So that's it for the introduction for this um, I am going to go and fix this in just a moment just a few things before you get started on getting right into this um, 
make sure that when you're saving this, you save both the project, so save project, as well as save scenes, because they're two different things. So uh, make sure you save those uh, frequently, like maximum every five minutes when you're working on this, so that any changes that you've made don't get lost in case of a power outage or something, or your program crashing for some reason. I've never experienced a crash myself, however, it could happen. So do make sure to save both things. Um, so I think that this lesson is best spent on, first of all, familiarizing ourselves with Unity. So as you can see, I changed uh, up my assets a bit because they were kind of ridiculous just to have the actual image in one corner. So I used GIMP for that once again. Um, and I repositioned my board. I was trying to get it as centered as possible, but that, that hasn't been working out well for me. Okay, so next, over here we have all of the components that are on the scene. So as you saw, when I drag and drop something, it go goes onto the scene. Uh, in there, uh, these are normally as sprites, I believe. You can change their there are different UI options, so these are default scripts. They contain default scripts that when you do something to them, they do a specific action. Video, audio, light, 2D object, 3D object, create empty, so you create your own object, but these are the default ones that you have. Um, then you also have scripts, so that's probably the most interesting thing that we need over here. So we have, um, okay, leave the default ones as they are for, for now because, well, they're default ones, they need to be there. You can add component. Uh, you can also, let me just find it. Where was the script? So let me just add, for example, a bishop, add component, and new script. So you have aspect ratio filter, you have new script, and we are going to be doing this in C sharp. As you can see here, we have the option of C Sharp or JavaScript. They're quite similar. I prefer C Sharp because I actually want to learn that as well. And it's not too different anyway from JavaScript, so we should be getting along fine. Anyway, all programming languages have a lot of similarities once you get into it and realize what those are. It should be fine. So you can name your script here. Let's name it Bishop movement script for example just for now even though that's probably what we're going to be calling it anyway um and c sharp creating that it allowed me to do that a second ago that's really weird um maybe here yep c sharp no that's really odd oh okay we can't have any spaces yeah, that's another thing. Uh, in most programming languages, it used to be that you can't actually have any spaces, so they're keeping to that. So yeah, we can call this one. This is the king, I believe, that I dragged out. King movement, movement script. And you can separate your words with underscores. I wouldn't recommend dashes. I've never seen that used, but I guess you can if you want to. Underscores are the most used, or you can have camel uh, naming, so you can have something like king movement, where all of the starting letters are capital letters. Stick to one and don't break it so that it's more easy for you to follow along. And then you do create and add. Once you've added the component, or in this case the script, it will appear over here. And it's only for this specific object that you've dragged out. It will also appear in your assets uh, tab, I guess, whatever you want to call it over here. And you can still select the king from the left here. You can, I believe, rename it. Yes, like you would rename any folder. Uh, I think you can also rename it with right clicking. It doesn't matter which way you prefer. So. Now that we've created the script, we can edit it using this little icon that looks like a gear. So to the right of the uh, component that we've added. And then we can go edit script. 
and it will load in Visual Studio which you should have downloaded if you haven't please tell me down in the comments if you're having problems with it otherwise you should be fine and it, if it's asking for you to log in you don't necessarily have to log in although you can uh, there is a, a, in small blue letters uh, login next time or something similar to that so this is all the, by default and it gives us some hint or tips on when to use this so this is for initialization i.e. for when we first load the game that happens and this is done once per frame therefore that's like if you want to do movement things however we're probably not exactly going to be using this as much we're going to be using this for sure though so as you can see this is a class which they've already pre-made for us and we've, we're also using different uh, libraries so it's quite interesting just to see what's going on in the background of bigger games. We're going to close this for now. Um, haven't yet figured out how to put these on top or how to put this on bottom, but that's not exactly important. We don't really need to rename our elements because we can only have um, one of each. Actually, we are going to need to rename the pawns though. So we can today start off by dragging out all of the pieces that we are going to need. Uh, I'm not actually sure whether I've got that oriented correctly. Let me find an image of a board, of a chessboard. So I've got a second monitor to my right well, because this is kind of uh, a big setup. Uh, as in, you can't see everything if I drag this on my uh, window over here as well so you can either be looking at that or that so the main thing that you will be seeing in these lessons from now on is just the unity and I will say when I'm using a browser as well and yeah this is incorrectly set out so I can easily just rotate it by 180 I believe unless it's not going to let me do that it, it normally does let you do that ah here we go rotation so on the right over here we have rotation x, y, z. We're not using z because this is in 3D. So uh, y or z? I can't actually think right now. I don't think it does it matter. 90. Yes, it does. Of course it does. I'm just I can't think of it right now. So I am going to need to figure out which one I need to rotate. Okay, so it was z. That was odd. Never mind. Okay, that's fine. So now we have it correctly orientated not that it's going to matter because I'm just using this as uh, I'm just using the board as an example of how it's going to look the actual board image isn't really going to be used so we have the bishop we need another white bishop which is going to be called white bishop with parentheses one so perhaps we can rename those we uh, you can also drag and drop them the order that you need them in uh, normally the order doesn't matter but sometimes it can matter which order they are over here so you might see me dragging and dropping them sometimes depending on what I need so those are two white two white bishops I know they're quite small I can enlarge them later on that's not that big of a deal the king goes on the right so the king would be there Oh, what? The king can actually stay there, but the bishops won't. Oh well, doesn't exactly matter too much. Uh, so I've got the king. Let's drag out the queen. No, that's another king. You can use the delete button to delete, like you would in normal situations. Um, there we go. It's kind of tedious to drag and drop because you have to click it and then drag. So that's one pawn, two pawns, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then we have the two rooks on the corners. We have the queen. Uh, where is my queen? Oh, there it is. And we also have the knights. So those are the white pieces that we need. Let me move the black pieces to the bottom so that they, we have all of the white pieces together along with the black pieces together. 
it's going to make life easier in my opinion anyway that's one of the black rooks that's the other then we can drag the other bishop out and I think that you get the point of how you would get everything onto here so I think that that's going to be it for today's lesson we are going to look at how we can start programming the pieces in here in the next lesson so we are probably going to be need uh, need to using the uh, the main camera and making a new script so game behavior or something like that which I'm going to make right now create and add and that's the main one you can also download scripts and use them in your own games that, that's completely fine however if they aren't suited for the game that you're making then they won't really work because well they're not suited for the game that you're making or they have different behavior that's fine so I might use that I'm probably not exactly going to because I want to make this by myself so if you want any help then feel free to ask in the comments down below I will be happy to help you out other than that thank you so much for watching this video and goodbye